medieval Latin has for the term rapture, it's called raptura. It means the same, seizure, kidnapping. You know, whether you want to or not, whether you're ready or not, when Jesus comes for his own, comes for his bride, he's going to seize you, he's going to kidnap you, and he's going to take you up into the clouds. Now, you know, a lot of us has embraced this coming of Jesus. It's the rapture of the church. We look forward to seeing Jesus in the clouds. We look forward to seeing our family members that are now deceased who have gone to be with the Lord, coming back. And we look forward to that new resurrected body. But I'm sure there's a few Christians who've trusted in Christ who just will not be ready for change. And maybe that's understandable. But whether you want to go or not, you will go. I think a lot of us should pray right now that we would be ready when Jesus returns. Oh, God, please forgive me my sins. Like in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Oh, Lord, cleanse us in the blood. The blood of Christ, there is cleansing. And give us our just desert. Give us what we deserve. And you know what that is, dear friend? It is everything that Jesus deserves because he is the advocate with the Father. Whatever he gets, he gives to us because we are in Christ. And that's the benefit of being a Christian is what, that we get what we deserve. And that is everything that is given to Christ is given to us. And I just thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, your cleansing, your washing. Just praise your holy name. Thank you, O God. Well, today we're going to look at not so much as raptura, the rapture of the church, as much as we're going to look at raptors, raptors in the end time. It almost sounds the same, doesn't it? Raptura and raptors. Well, there are raptors let loose. This is Larry Zorro. Stay tuned. I'm going to tell you what I mean. Now, if anyone's familiar with Jurassic Park, they would know what a raptor dinosaur is. You can just tell them by their teeth. They got many sharp teeth. You know, they're, uh, they're carnivorous. And they're incredible swift as they attack their prey. You might have heard some of the names. They got names for them. Like uh, the Utah Raptor, Micro Raptor, and then that famous one in uh, Jurassic Park, Velociraptor. Well, I know we don't have dinosaurs today, but I'm talking about a different kind of raptor, one that has two feet, they look like us, but they're as cold as a lizard creature, or like that quick and powerful velociraptor. You know, you could become a victim of these raptors just by driving down one of those cities that there's a lot of demonstrations and a lot of rioting going on. You could be driving down, maybe it's from a prayer meeting, but you could be just innocently driving around, and all of a sudden these raptors will be coming out at you. They'll be jumping on your vehicle. They'll be jumping in front of your vehicle. They'll be trying to smash in to your window with their claws or their skateboard, but just like a claw from a raptor, and you'll be terrified. They tell you now, just go keep going. Go at a slow speed, five miles an hour, so you can actually get out of that Jurassic Park. Now, you look at your daily news, and you see these buildings on fire, and you're asking yourself, what's going on? And then you see one of those raptors, and you kind of figure it out. These guys are just out to kill, steal, and destroy. Now, wasn't that said of Satan? Wasn't that said of the devil that he seeketh about whom he may devour? And it seemed like his children do the same thing, which I now call raptors in Babylon. Listen to this verse in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 12. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. And you go to verse 13, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they count it pleasure to riot in daytime. Spots they are and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. 
Aren't you glad, though, that the battle is not your battle? You don't need to take up arms and go out and become a raptor, destroying other raptors as one big old zoo of dinosaurs killing one another. No, we leave it to the Lord. We are people of love, and we shine forth the love of Christ. We petition people to come to Jesus, but we don't lift up our swords. We don't sharpen our axes. We don't take our sledgehammer, and we don't go after them thinking that we are God. The battle is the Lord. Let him do it. If we should lay down our life for Jesus, if God calls you to, we'll lay it down. But we're not going to take souls with us. And I'll say one other thing. Don't try to reason with people that are just bent on violence. Right there. They do not understand. They understand not. And they'll perish in their own corruption. You cannot reason with them. Just leave the premises. Leave the area. Or become a martyr for Jesus. You make the decision. But make sure, if you become a martyr, make sure that Jesus is on your lips. Hallelujah. No political figure. No political affiliation. No, make sure that they know when they're killing you, they're killing Christ. That's right. They're killing Christ that's in you, that you're in him and he's in you, that they're doing it in spite of God Almighty. That's the way I want to go. If I'm a martyr for Jesus, I want to go with Jesus on my lips. And as you know, you can't die. Now people can put you to sleep, and they can kill your body, but they can't kill you. Your spiritual essence is safe with God. They cannot kill Christ again. He is in you, and you're in him. They can only destroy, or they can temporarily put to sleep our mortal body until we rise again. Just like Christ rose again from the grave, we too have an appointment with destiny, the resurrection of the dead. We too will rise upward into the clouds to meet Jesus in the air. That's the rapture of the church. Now, I don't mean to scare you with all that rapture stuff. It's not as bad as it's going to be after the rapture. For it says in 2 Thessalonians verse 3, chapter 2, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, it's talking about the second rapture. They're talking about when the angels come and when the Lord takes up residency on the earth. But before the Antichrist is revealed, that's the rapture of the church. That's those things when they begin to happen. Look up your redemption draweth nigh. Jesus is coming in the clouds. At the end, Jesus comes in the clouds. But right now, we're looking for the rapture. When that rapture takes place, then there's that falling away. Then you're just left with a bunch of raptors roaming the earth. And then the king of raptors, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. It says he opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship. So that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. So that is the time prior to Jesus coming in the day of the Lord. But there's a rapture to happen. And when that rapture happens, there comes a falling away. A falling away because the people of God were taken, they were seized up into the clouds, and what's left is the fallen ones. This is Larry Zorro. You have a good day. Take care. God bless. See you next time.